How fast is something really moving? Standing here, I can guess that the boat behind me is moving five meters per second to the left. But if I'm on the boat, the boat is stationary, and it's the shore that's moving at five meters per second to the right. In this segment, we're going to learn about relative velocity, which will help us understand this phenomenon a little bit better. So far, when we've talked about motion, our frame of reference has remained static. Frame of reference is the view of the person or object observing the motion. For example, from my frame of reference on the shore, the boat is moving. But from my frame of reference on the boat, the boat is stationary and the shore appears to be moving. And this applies to everything. From our frames of reference on Earth, the Earth is still. But from someone observing from another planet, the Earth is speeding through space. According to the laws of physics, there's no way to distinguish between an object at rest and an object moving at a constant velocity. This means that there's no one answer to the question, how fast is something moving? It's all relative. Most of the time, we assume a stationary frame of reference relative to the Earth, but other times, we can have a moving frame of reference, like this boat. Let's say this boat is moving at five meters per second parallel to the shoreline in the positive direction, and that I begin walking at one meter per second in the same direction the boat is traveling in. From someone standing still on the pier, how fast do you think they see me moving from their frame of reference? To answer this question, let's solve it by using a diagram or mathematically. Our frame of reference is someone looking at the boat from the pier. The boat's velocity vector shows that it is moving at five meters per second in the positive direction. I'm on the boat moving in the same direction at one meter per second. We can see my velocity vector as well. To calculate my velocity relative to someone standing on the pier, all we have to do is add my velocity vector to the boat's velocity vector. Add five plus one, and my velocity relative to the pier is six meters per second in the positive direction. Now let's solve the problem mathematically. The velocity of the boat relative to the pier, v sub boat to pier, and my velocity relative to the boat, v sub Adrian to boat, can be added together because they are in the same plane. Their sum is the resultant velocity, my velocity, relative to the pier. Five meters per second in the positive direction plus one meter per second in the positive direction add up to six meters per second in the positive direction, which is the same answer we got using the graphical method. Now what if I was to walk in the opposite direction on the boat? The boat is still moving at five meters per second in the positive direction, but this time I am moving in one meter per second in the negative direction or negative one meter per second. What will my velocity be relative to the pier this time? We'll still add V sub boat to pier and V sub Adrian to boat. And this time, V sub boat to pier is still five meters per second, but V sub Adrian to boat is negative one meter per second. So the resultant velocity will be four meters per second, still in the positive direction. That was a relative velocity problem in which all movement was in one dimension. Let's work through a problem in which the movement is in two dimensions. This boat is traveling east, going five meters per second. Let's say I walk, going north across the deck of the boat, at two meters per second this time. What's my velocity relative to the boat? Let's draw it out. It's simpler than you think. From the perspective of anything on the boat, the boat is always still, and it's everything else that's moving. To know my velocity relative to the boat, the velocity of the boat doesn't matter. So, from the frame of reference of the boat, my relative velocity is just two meters per second going north. When I moved across the deck, what was my velocity relative to the pier? Let's draw it out. The boat's velocity vector is going five meters per second east. My velocity vector is going two meters per second north. We'll pick north and east as our positive directions. From here on, I just need to know the resultant of these two vectors. To do that, I need to add them together, taking into account that they are pointing in different directions. So I'll use the tip to tail method to put them together, and use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the resultant. We can make the boat's velocity relative to the pier, A, my velocity relative to the boat, B, and the resultant velocity relative to the pier, C. 
The Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the two sides of our right triangle made by the vectors added together, a squared plus b squared equals the square of the hypotenuse, or the square of the resultant vector, c squared. 5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to c squared. 5 squared is 25, and 2 squared is 4. 25 plus 4 is 29. And if we take the square root on both sides, we find out that c is equal to 5.39 meters per second going northeast. So from the frame of reference of the pier, when I moved across the deck of an already moving boat, I traveled 5.39 meters per second going northeast relative to the pier. An important point to remember is that all motion is relative. When something's moving, there isn't one correct answer as to how fast it's going, or even if it's moving at all. It all depends on the frame of reference of the observer, and that's why relative velocity is so important. That's it for this segment of Physics in Motion. We'll see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.